I'm Sean Rocky Jeech, and this is Hui from HD b and Today, we're doing some photography. Let's jump right in. High five. All right, welcome back Airbnb family. So my name's Sean Rakijic, most of you know me. Um, this is Hui, a new friend of mine. He's been watching the channel for a long time. Uh, he's a professional photographer, I am not. Um, and today we are um, actually putting a new Airbnb property on the market. We made the listing last night. He does not know what my photos look like yet, but what I've done is I use a Panasonic G9 for my professional version of photography. And I saw him shoot some photos a couple days ago and I decided I was gonna to try to use some of his tricks with my camera and try to come up with some professional photography. So I invited him to, before he sees my version, um, to let him do his thing and shoot the same exact house. So you, you guys are gonna be able to see what my photos look like when they're done and what his look like when they're done. And I think just as like for a point of reference, while he's shooting all this professional stuff, I'm gonna use my camera phone and I'm just gonna copy his shots with my camera phone so you can really see the drastic difference between like a camera phone shot, even edited, um, and then an amateur using professional gear and then a pro using professional gear. If I beat him, he owes me a coffee. It's kind of how this is gonna go. So uh, without further ado, let's get to shooting. So obviously having a good camera helps, but I really don't think that it's the, like, the godsend of good photography, right? That's fair. Okay, so give us a, give us a breakdown. Like, what are the few things that you should be considering when shooting, aside from just having like a good camera? If you could do other things, what should you focus on? The main thing I would say when shooting like professional interior shots for Airbnb or any type of real estate is your composition is what's really it's going to come down to. Yes, having a really good camera and a good lens, it's it's a good plus, but some people don't think it's necessary. What's composition? Composition meaning just literally your framing. Like, if you were to frame this room, where would you want to shoot it to get the best angle to encapsulate the best, like, the viewing angles for your guests to see how big and spacious your room is? So, like, a newbie angle composition problem. Like, what does somebody do that, like, is just super, like, oops when they're shooting a property composition-wise? Uh, some of the worst I see is, well, one, when they're shooting, like, at a downward angle or upward angle. Like, yeah. what are you guys doing? Shoot at a straight-on leveled angle. That's the most mm -hmm. important and simple thing to do, first of all. Um, another tip is, or mistake I see often, is lighting. Like, when you're seeing these real estate listings or Airbnb listings, you, you see it's, it's in such a dark, not well-lit environment. And immediately, if you were to guess and see that, you would just, you would just skip on to the next photo immediately. Like, why would you want to look at something that's dark and gloomy? when you see a professional like luxury listing, it's bright and spacious. So how much of that lighting com part of composition is done pre-photo and how much of it is like stuff you do on your computer after it's shot? I would say it's a good 50-50 split. So that's where the technology comes to play. With the higher end cameras and higher end lenses, you're able to let more light in to your, for your photos so that it doesn't look as artificial. Whereas when you're using a smartphone camera, you're, it's the way those cameras deal with not well lit situations, they're, they're gonna have to use some type of software or AI to fix that. And usually most times you're gonna notice the difference in that software. Wicked, right? right? Okay, so framing and composition is something I remember one of my buddies in film school said. So framing or composing the shot is where you're pointed, right? Mm -hmm. So you're recommending level shots, um, get some ceiling, get some floor in the shot kind of thing? I would say so. Uh, one tip one of my, my pro uh, real estate photographers told me, he likes to shoot at the corners so that he can uh, use the, to basically show three walls. When you're showing three walls, he thinks that's a good way. I personally like shooting straight on, like right down the middle of the hallway. I like that. I think the symmetry is cool and it shows. It works in some situations better than others. But it's always nice to have those four corners as well. It's a, it's a safe guideline to go through. Okay, so he likes shooting at a corner because you got that vertical line mm -hmm. and you have leading lines pointing to that vertical mm -hmm. line, right? Yeah. Um, in my experience, I, I like 
well, actually, we actually talk about this in the course. We actually go like and spy on other people's properties, like mm -hmm. like like high rises that are spending millions of dollars on their stuff. And certain like room layouts look really good because of where stuff is. That that leading line going to that that corner wall looks really good. But then other layouts, like no, you shoot down the corridor and then you have four leading lines coming to the box at the end, right? Because like this one's narrow. Right? Mm -hmm. So this room sense it's narrow, shooting right down the middle probably is the best. I would think so. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously we can overshoot, we get more coverage as they call it and shoot in all ton of different angles, but mm -hmm. down the center is probably the best. So, so you say level, you know, leading lines, shooting at the corner. Um, you did say that before you can turn your lights on or you can not, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's no like real like hard and fast rule. Like you have to have all your lights on. No, no. So I, at that point, it depends on your preference. Uh, I've seen, I've worked with other companies where they prefer no lighting at all. And the reason for that is to utilize all the natural light possible from your windows. Because to them, it's just a more natural light. It, it just looks more pleasing in the finishing results. But there's other companies where they prefer all interior lighting on. So at that point, I feel like it just depends on who your client is and what they want. Yeah. And so that's what that sound of your camera is when it goes, right? You're, you're basically getting like you're getting different shots of the same room so that way no matter how dark or light it is you're able to get like the proper amount of light in different parts of the room right yeah so that's a cool um, feature called bracketing photos basically it depends you can take a photo in either three or five different exp uh, brackets meaning you say say you take a photo with using bracketing you're shooting three photos at a time for this example the first photo it takes is going to be very underexposed and dark, but it's exposing for the highlights. Meaning, if you're shooting at a window, normally when you shoot at a window, it's gonna be super bright outside and under, uh, overexposed because you're trying to make sure everything inside is still well exposed. But when you're shooting bracketing photos, you're, sh you're mainly exposing for the highlights outside so that you can capture all the details of what's going on outside. So that would be the first photo that's taken. The middle photo that's taken is like the middle ground where you get an even exposure outside and inside. And then the final one is the overexposed shot where just, everything is super bright and blown out, but it's, it's, uh, it's exposing for all the darks and the shadows. So that after you have all these photos, when you go back to post, you edit them together to get a, a combined image, an HDR image of the like an awesome photo basically yeah so post is post production which means after you have all your photos shot you put them in a computer and now you're in post yes right okay cool so the the, the moral of the story is you take three identical shots with mm -hmm. your camera one where you let in very little light one where you let in a normal amount of light and then one where you let in too much light you stack all three on top of each other and then the darker part of one photo is exposed right and the brighter part of another photo is exposed right and you pretty much just take all three stack them on top of each other and try to keep the best of all three photos exactly and that creates a what's called an hdr which is high dynamic range right exactly cool um we're not going to show you how to do an hdr like edit um i do that i keep mentioning the course this is we're about to launch it so everything's in there so i do show you guys how to hdr like edit how to do post-production um you're going to have to be able to bracket your shots and you'd be surprised there's technology out there that you don't have to do it like the super um, like like the super awesome way. Mm -hmm. He's gonna be using a tripod, I use a tripod, and essentially what a tripod does in these shots as you've seen is the camera sits exactly still, it's perfectly the same shot, and then you just, like you basically you're shifting the exposure. You could do this with a camera that you're holding and you stand there, you shoot the shot, you use your thumb reel to increase exposure, shoot the shot again, use your thumb reel to increase exposure, shoot the shot again. And there's softwares that can line those up for you so that way you're not gonna get all of the shot, it won't be perfect, but there's going to be a common area of all three photos that are identical and then you can merge those. So you can do it handheld and we'll talk about that in a future thing. But um, yeah, so that's essentially what's up. Let's. Uh, Let's keep, let's keep this party moving because after this, uh, we're gonna see what the photos actually came out and looked like. Also, when you're setting the tripod height, you don't want it too high, but you don't want it too low. I'm a short guy, I'm about 5'6". I usually keep it right around like my chest height, and it usually does well. If there's a cool ceiling in it I, and you wanna showcase that, obviously you have to raise the tripod height. So it, us, it really depends situation to situation, but you can always make it work. So as far as camera settings go, I usually try to shoot at f f8 to f11, 
um, just to get make sure everything's in focus. So when you do that, as long as you set it at that level, like F8, you're basically adjusting your shutter and your ISO to correspond to an even exposure using your camera settings. Uh, most cameras these days will tell you when you're at that optimal exposure level. It'll say like zero, that's where you want to be. That means like everything's well lit or like the whole picture is exposed. But yeah, as long as you have a tripod, it shouldn't matter how slow your shutter is. And as long as your ISO is under 800, I would say, you should be good. Um, let's see. Another cool tip I like to use is shooting with a remote. It's a nice wireless trigger. You can just hit it and it will take the photo for you. So everything's ready to be shot. Uh, I have it on manual focus so that you don't have to worry about losing focus at any time. It's just a peace of mind kind of thing. But once everything is good, you're shooting in raw, um, auto white balance because you could just fix that in post-production editing. And then you just take the photo. And if you heard that, it took three photos just now because I'm using a three bracket exposure. So a bit of the lingo that he's been explaining is that his f-stop or his aperture is at a certain setting. And that aperture he likes to keep between like f8 and f11, which is more closed than say like f2. And by having a, a more of a needle to look through with your aperture, everything is in focus. The wider the eye of a lens, the more things blur, which means that like the like I can be in focus, but things like in the background are blurry if my eye of my lens is wide open or my aperture is low, or if my f-stop is two. Now, if my f-stop is 22, that's like a pin needle that you, the light is coming through, which means pretty much everything is in focus. That's, so that's how aperture works. So he's doing something called bracketing. The way bracketing works is you're going to take three different shots with three different amounts of light. The camera can get more light by either um, exposing the sensor longer or widening that eye more, that aperture, opening it up, or um, changing the ISO, which he explained, which is like artificial light and like, like increasing the amplification signal of the sensor when it gets light. So if your ISO goes too high, like he said, the quality of the image goes down. And if you open up that eye of the um, lens too much, things start to get blurry. So if you want three identical looking shots, essentially as far as quality and focus goes, the only thing you can do is to shoot for longer periods of time. So in order to basically get your camera to do this, you have to do something that's called aperture priority. Aperture priority is usually an A on the wheel. So at the top of my G9, you'll see that there's a P, there's an M, there's an S, there's an A. So S is shutter priority or shutter speed. So it's always taking light at the same amount of speed. Aperture priority means that the lens is a certain amount. In order for me to prevent my camera from amplifying the light and changing its ISO, there's a setting in most cameras that allow you to set a limit, like a high limit. Like the ISO on my shot will not go above this amount. So you go into your camera's base settings and set your ISO limit so that way that ISO can't get cranked up. You then switch it to aperture priority and say the aperture will not change. We will always shoot at 8 or 11 or whatever that you get a set. And then if you do a bracketing shot where you change the exposure based on the bracketing, it'll then change the amount of exposure you, you get by taking three shots at three different speeds. And so aperture priority with an ISO ceiling is the way that you can get that shot. That's how he's doing it inside of a bathroom right now, shooting extremely, <laughs> extremely slow shots because there's like no light in that bathroom. All right, after scoping everything out, it looks good. First shot I'll do, straight on, right down the center of the room. as far back as possible as I can go while still maintaining my composition. Make sure everything is exposed properly. Now these shots is where it can get tricky because you have a window right there and if you were to expose this whole room properly, everything else is looking well lit, but then the window is super overexposed. So what you do is you just get a middle ground where you see some of it, so your overall image might be darker. So I would crank up my shutter so that everything looks darker, but you have to find that middle ground where it's not completely black and the window's bright, or where it's the window's completely bright and the, the middle's good. 
I'm pretty happy with that. I could. I definitely want to showcase this space. So I like how like uh, this whole unit is uni unicorn theme, so we really want to show that off. Um, for here, a straight on shot would be perfect. And since I am shooting at 16 millimeters on a full frame lens, that's very wide. Uh, people like to say that's the go-to for real estate photography. You can go wider, but then you risk the you take the risk of having distortion around your images where things aren't looking straight on, they start to bend and whatnot. So something to keep in mind of. On APS-C cameras, you're looking, a 10 to 18 would be nice. That's almost equivalent to a 16 to 35 on a full frame. But play around with it. So basically, I think I hit all the major shots for the tripod and bracketed shots. The only other thing I would do is go back in for some of these details for detail shots. So for those shots, I wouldn't have to use a tripod. I could just go in, use aperture priority mode, set the set my min and max ISO, and just take these photos like single shots. So there's normal photos. You use a lower f-stop, the number, like I was shooting at f8 to keep everything sharp and in focus. But when you lower that number, you're letting more light in. And then by doing that, you create the shallow depth of field, or the bokeh, or literally it's just blurring out the background, as everybody loves. So you can do shots like those for detail shots. Those are pretty common in Airbnb photos. Not so much in real estate, but just Airbnb, it doesn't hurt. So maybe I'll take a few of these amenities, like uh, the coffee maker and the toaster and some of the pots and pans. So for this one, I'm shooting at 35 at f2.8, and yeah, maybe I'll bring it up to 3.5. You, you lower the number when you want more light, basically. And I would shoot this right here because that's kind of cool. You can showcase the knives and some interesting unicorn art. Uh, make sure we're shooting just one photo, always shooting raw. Maybe crank up the next one. Thank you.